Hey guys, I'm Sapphire Nova Cosplay. I'm so glad you all could join me today. So I'm gonna take you on a little adventure today. So in becoming Lady Death. So it's quite a long and intensive process. Um, and so unfortunately I couldn't be here with you live today, but I am watching all the comments. So please make sure that you, you know, if you have any question, please ask. I love questions. I'll be answering them through comments. Um, but this is about a two to three hour, depending on how good I am that day, um, journey. So it takes me quite a long time to, you know, go from me to Lady Death. So yeah, like I said, I'm gonna, you know, have to fast forward through a couple parts. There's a lot of parts that get kind of monotonous and repetitive. So, you know, hang on with me, but uh, you know, you'll get to see everything from me. This is me au naturel today. Um, to, you know, becoming Lady Death. So, we're gonna get started here. So, one fun part about painting is I don't really have a lot of, uh, you know, can't have a lot of clothes on for that. So, you guys get to enjoy the show. <laughs> um, so, for All My Lady Death, I always appear painted, contacts, like that's just, I believe in making her exactly who she was supposed to be and you know to do anything less than that I think is is cheating so I you know I do completely paint every time um, I do it for all my photo shoots I don't use Photoshop or any of that kind of stuff I like to be who I am so you know the person that you see uh, in a photograph in a video that's me um, you know for all my flaws for all my great things it's who I am <laughs> so um, I do paint, so that's where we're going to start today. So I use, um, it's called Paradise, it's by Mayron. Um, it's a water-based paint. It's what I use for all my body paints. Um, it's a great, like, I really like it because it's really light. Like, I can almost forget I'm wearing it on my skin. Um, but it's, it's still a really nice, um, you know, coverage. Now, it's not going to work for all people, um, because unfortunately it is a water-based paint, so you know, if you sweat a lot, all that kind of stuff, it does, you know, it does tend to streak. So you just have to be careful and know your own body composition. Um, for me, I know it works really great and I've used it a lot. I totally have a dog hair in my paint. I wonder whose fault that was. So for all my paints, I use just a, you know, nice, good standard size brush. Um, I like them where they don't have too long of bristles and where they don't have either too short and, you know, not too small of a brush. So I find that, you know, a powder brush like this tends to work best. Um, so like I said, it's, it's got a good length to it and a good thickness that it gets lots of coverage, but not a lot of, um, you know, not a lot of, well, I mean, it does get a little streaking, which is what I'm going to show you in the next part here. And then, you know, I've got my little cup of water here because it is a water-based paint, so it needs just a little bit of water to, to activate it. I mean, I already kind of swirled it around, but, you know, I end up kind of brushing off a good portion of the water because if it's too wet, then it runs. And so I have to make sure, you know, it's kind of a good consistency. So when I kind of swirl it here, I can kind of see if it's not too drippy in the, in the pot that it's not gonna be too drippy on me. So that's kind of how I judge. Now, I have leggings, I have boots that I wear with Lady Death. Most of my, my costumes have ones that go over the knee. The ones I'm gonna wear today go to about like my mid thigh. So I never paint anything that you can't see. So if it's gonna get covered with a boot, I'm not gonna paint it. So I'm not gonna paint all the way down my leg, but I will start about here. Now for Lady Death, it takes a couple coats. So the first time I go in it, I just want to make sure I get kind of everywhere. Try not to get out on the clothing. So honestly, this is more clothing than I usually do this. Secret little fun fact. <laughs> yeah, pull that up because that'll go back down later. Need a little more water. So, you know, it's kind of constantly like dip and repeat, dip and repeat. Dip and repeat. Now it's always hard with body paint to get two different patches to align. 
So I always try and paint as big a patch as I can. Kind of use And I gotta get nicely in the butt. <laughs> I want to try and get as much coverage as possible now as you can clearly see it is ridiculously streaky that's okay <laughs> that's where I'm fine with it being right now it will not be that way when I'm done you get to see all my fabulous uh, contortionists here I do all my body painting by myself occasionally if I need to get like the small of my back, then I will have to, you know, have somebody else help me, but rarely, especially like Lady Death, I usually wears a cape, which yes, for me, because it's one less place I have to paint. <laughs> okay. So like I said, first one's streaky. I'm gonna do this next leg here pretty quick. I'm going to take this opportunity to fast forward a little bit so you're going to have to bear with me as we uh you know go through this but otherwise it's way too lengthy a process so now that we're up to speed here you know both my legs are are painted but again you can see they're really streaky that's ah, terrifying no it's really not <laughs> the first coat always is um for all my body paints sometimes i do you know two to three coats it kind of actually works out well because the further up my body I go, the less I have to use. That's just part of my body composition and what I've learned through my years of doing body painting. I've been cosplaying pretty much all my life. Um, and I've been doing body paints really solidly for the last like six years. Um, I mean, I've done characters like Gamora, Starfire. So I'm gonna race through this next little part here and uh, you know, put on a couple more coats. I've also done characters like Mystique and Corpse Bride. So, you know, with all that experience, I've learned what works for my body, and it's something that you'll learn with experience for your body as well. Okay. So, two coats down. Um, again, still really streaky, not freaking out about it. I do try and make it as even as possible. So, you know, I don't want to leave like huge chunks open, but streaks totally fine. There's like weird blotches and stuff like that totally normal totally acceptable i'm not worried about it at all um that's the thing i'm going to get with this last coat so whenever i decide that you know that's as many coats as i feel i need um so in today's case i'm going to do three um on the very last time that's when it's something kind of different this is the time intensive part <laughs> so i'm going to do exactly the same thing i've done on the legs up until this point However, afterwards, I'm gonna take my little makeup sponge here. So just like a little wedge sponge. You can do bigger. I like this size just cause it gets nice even coverage. Um, but that's what I'm gonna, you know, start with here. I'm gonna quickly apply my final coat before I hit it with the sponge. And now I start blotting and blot and blot and blot. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of evening out the paint basically. So I'm taking away all those streaks I'm making my own, you can kind of see, it's still a little blotchy right now. My first goal is just to get as much of the streaks as I can. So just get, you know, kind of as much coverage, hit it all quick as possible. And then... It does take a lot of time and effort to go over the same spot again and again, but each time you hit it with the sponge, you make it a little bit more even and take away those streaks, which make it look really nice and clear. Now by the time I'm done, streaky, not streaky. Looks natural, looks nice. Still streaky, <laughs> No, but that's gonna be the next part. So again, I'm just gonna keep doing that so it gives this nice, even, natural coat. Now, I'm not worried about the part like around my, my knee here. Really, I just have that little bit extra paint just to make sure if the costume slips or shifts that it has space to, you know, that it's not immediately obvious because you can see there is quite a bit difference between my white and my skin tone. So, you know, I don't want the costume to, you know, shift just that little bit and then there's, there's that big blaring spot. So we're gonna go back through the blotting process because there's a lot of it. 
it's always tricky trying to paint two sections together, so that's why I try to paint in such large sections, but if you do have a line where it's a little darker, you can always pull from that section and drag it towards the lighter section. Now, like I said before, see that little line there? There's really not much I can do about it, but I can, like I said, kind of drag from areas of more paint and bring them to less. So I'm gonna kind of focus a little bit on that line, pulling it all around here, try and disguise that out a little bit more. Because at the end of the day, there's a couple flaws that are acceptable flaws. And you kind of have to learn to live with that. There is no such thing in perfection in body painting. It does not exist. Just like there's no such thing as perfection in bodies. Um, I mean, there's always little things. Like, some of my favorite parts about body painting is when you see little things like, you know, I have moles, I have freckles. I do. I love them. They make me look natural. I hate to remove them, like I don't remove them from pictures. I don't try and hide them because they're what make me me. I like that body paint has a little bit more of a just natural look to it. So, you know, some people tend to use like body suits um, to help change the color of their skin if they have like a specialty character like that. But for me, I just think it makes it look a little bit more unnatural. So, you know, I'm all for everybody can do whatever makes them feel good and body painting is definitely a chore but I just like the way it looks when I don't have, you know, the the wrinkles that you can see with the body suits or any of that. I just think it adds a whole nother element to the naturalist. And again, it lets those little flaws and those little things that are uniquely me show through. So I just think it makes it just extra special. Okay, ta-da, legs done. So you can see I'm slowly becoming so it's kind of a fun process for me because also mentally, you know, while I'm doing this, usually it's like four o'clock in the morning at a convention, but <laughs> it's, it's kind of a fun process for me because it allows me to take that time to kind of reflect, you know, get into the mindset of Lady Death because she really is, you know, quite a, an intense and just really interesting character because she is so different from myself, but that's what I love. You know, I... I use a lot of my cosplays to to learn more about myself, honestly, because there's so much strength from, from so many people and, you know, different parts that I don't naturally have. And so for her, it's confidence. I mean, even though there's that part of her that questions herself, she is, you know, she believes in who she is. And I think there's always part of that, you know, us that we do question ourselves, we do, you know, Am I on the right path? Am I doing the right thing? But that, you know, unwavering confidence, it's, you know, it's something great to have. So I find that when I wear her as a costume, I, I do become a different person. It does make me more, more aware of that beauty and that strength that I don't think I would have found otherwise. So it really is, you know, a cool, cool thing to be able to, to you know, have this transformation time to, you know, to truly become Lady Death. So, stomach time. You guys get to see more of my contortion. Yes, I do paint my own back. <laughs> it's one of those uh, fun things. Oh, it's always cold though. I always start with warm water and then by the time I get here, it's never warm. Up a little bit. <laughs> There's a lot of repetition in this process. So, you know, you do learn a lot about the good habits and the bad habits, like making sure that the brush isn't too wet because otherwise you will get drips. You can kind of see, I don't know, I kind of got it already. But my brush is a little bit too wet, so it's causing those drips there. So, if that happens, I just go back to my cup and just kind of squeeze it out a little bit because I don't want drips to happen because it will ruin everything I've just done. The worst is when you're painting a section and then you get a drip that lands on the beautiful section you've already done. That sucks. <laughs> so really all you can do is be careful. Because again, still, you know, if you're taking proper precautions, I'm going to take this opportunity like to fast forward it, a little bit. So you're yeah, going to have to bear with me as we, uh, sure you know, runny. go through this, but otherwise but it's way too lengthy to process. And now I'm going to go do my back. 
I don't worry too much about my back because it is a little difficult to reach, but I just want to make sure that there's at least some paint on it that just in case they're shifting. Again, streaky, awful, ah, not what I want. I'm gonna go back, do the same process I did on my legs. So, my next coat. You look so bad when it's streaky. <laughs> When you're first starting out with body paint, it's hard not to panic over the, the initial streaky look, but once you get the pattern down and learn how to blot it out, it really isn't too frightening and it's not that hard of a, like a thing to overcome. Corpse so ride. don't panic so, initially. You know, with all that experience, really I've tough. learned what works for my... All right, midsection's done. See, two coats here, three coats here. They look the same. I don't know, that's just my body. Um, obviously, my back still needs some work. But again, it's not gonna be hugely seen, so I'm not gonna focus too much on it. I am gonna do what I can though to make it look, you know, kinda nice. It's why I hide, I call them the seams, but the places where one section of body paint meets the other. You notice, I don't know how you can see. See right in here, see there's that little like discoloration? It's just where the two seams met. And it's really hard to get rid of those, but that's why I disguised it so nicely where it sits underneath something else. So really, you're not gonna see it. You're not ever gonna even pay attention to it or even notice it exists. It does, there's no way to really get rid of it, but that's the easiest way to kind of blend that out. So now, all you see is nice clean section, nice clean section. So, gotta do the same to my back, so here we go. If you do have a place where you have two seams meet, it's a little bit better to stop just a tiny bit before you hit the other set of paint. That way you can kind of drag the paint over and it helps blend it out so you don't get too dense of an area where it makes a harsher line. It's the same thing that happens when you get drips. Um, it'll actually kind of take away the paint, so you really have to be careful with that. And I can uh, show I can you show a little you. bit of what happens. Yeah. I do a little patch here because this won't be seen. And too wet. Oh, I can already like feel it. So it goes from being that beautiful little section here to if I let it drip. That's, oh, there's a nice one. Ah. Okay. Now, if I go through and just, I'll just blend it right in. What happened? It totally took away that that patch and I don't know how well you're able to see it through the camera here but if you can see it's in the perfect shape of that drip <laughs> so the more I try and do away with it the more it appears so not a good thing don't even try best thing you can do go over it all a lot again go back and then you'll have a nice patch. If you notice, the edges are always harsh. I, there's nothing I can do to get rid of them. I don't even try, like you can. You can spend a lot of time really working on blotting that out and getting it. It's not worth it. Use that part as where it hides under the clothes. Like that's, that's exactly what I do. Cause again, I could spend that time, could make it work. But if it's something that I can hide away, do it, you'll save yourself a lot of heartache. <laughs> okay, now that I have this random white patch on my arm that has no purpose whatsoever, eh, whatever. Next section, moving on up. Now, we're starting to get to where my hair kind of interferes. I'm gonna put on my wig cap. I love, if any of you ever wear wig caps, these are my favorite. Um, they don't necessarily have to be the mesh, but I like the mesh, but they have two holes in them. One at the top, one at the bottom. Best thing ever because, see, I haven't done pin curls, I haven't put up my hair, I didn't do anything. Now, I have naturally thin hair, so, you know, it doesn't, it's not as hard as those with thick hair, but even still, even if I had thick hair, it's so much easier to do it this way. If you need something to like secure, like if it's a back heavy wig, like ponytail wigs, things like that, you might wanna do pin curls um, just because it gives you something to anchor into. 
But if you don't, like this is so much easier. Throw down around my neck. There's always a thicker side. So it's got like a, a nice little like ribbon edge there. And then there's a side that has nothing, just kind of fades into nothing. Um, you want that nice thick ridge right across your forehead. And boom, like that. All my hair's up. Goodbye hair. Come on, goodbye. It helps put the wig cap on at this point because it gets the hair off my shoulders and that way it doesn't interfere with the paint. When I paint my chest, I really only need one coat for it, so it's something that I got to do kind of all in one go. So, next stage done. One coat, two coats, three coats, all the same. I don't know. So now we start getting into arms. Um, luckily for Lady Death, I've got my nice long gloves, so I don't have to worry too much about the arms. I'm going to shift this in a little bit. Now, my brush is a little on the dry side right now, which it's still an acceptable level that I'm not too concerned. Um, but when it starts to get too dry, so too wet you get the drips, too dry it like sticks and it doesn't spread as well. So that's why I always kind of make sure I'm always coming back to dipping my brush again and again and again. Finding that Goldilocks moment with the brush where it's not too wet and not too dry is really challenging, but you really get the hang of it pretty quickly because either you're going to have a lot of problems with dripping or it's going to be that kind of sticky feeling with it's too dry. So you get a hang of it really quick and it's not as bad as it seems. Looking pretty good. Have a little bit of this coloration around here, so I'm gonna go back in, touch it up. I'm constantly looking for those little flaws. Again, I always have to judge in my mind, is it an acceptable flaw in the sense like, if you look at it, you know, yeah, there's a little bit here. Like, you can kind of see this one in here. I'm not worried about it, the glove's gonna cover it. You might see a little bit of that, so I'm just gonna make sure I'm going back over it. But, you know, you kind of have to judge what is okay and what is not. And the more and more you do it, the more you learn what those, I call my acceptable flaws, because there's some things that it is not worth the risk possibly screwing it up, having to do it all over again. It's so easy to get caught up in every little tiny flaw and go, oh, if only I take it just that little bit further, can I fix it? I'll make it perfect, I'll be absolutely flawless you're gonna waste so much time and so much heartache doing that and it's things that people will never notice again there's some things that people will you know you don't want those big giant gap you know gaping holes like if this were you know visible yes that would be terrible i would never let that fly i would redo the whole arm before i would let that go but it's gonna get covered the things that you do see are all looking pretty even now so, slowly, getting wider and wider as we go. Gotta do the whole thing there, same thing, other arm. This is the last of the big sections, so I am always making sure that I'm getting close to the um, clothing lines, you know, making sure I'm getting any place that could be even slightly visible. You know, I just want to make sure that I, I drag the paint into all those little spaces just so there's nothing really obvious that jumps out at you. Alrighty, looking pretty good. Again, looks pretty strange when you see, you know, sections that are not white. My fingertips, <laughs> it always kind of bleeds through or gets, you know, in in some point. So, you know, make sure I'm going to wash my hands before I do things like putting in contacts. but. That's the last step I do. And honestly, with Lady Death, my husband's gonna help. <laughs> uh, because once I put in those contacts, it's not that I can't see, and actually I'm gonna give you guys a little treat and see if you guys can uh, see a little bit of what I see, which is kind of cool actually, because that's one of the, the number one questions I get asked is, can I see through my contacts? Yes, yes, I can't. Well, depends, I have a new pair that, whew, I really can't see through those. But the ones I wear to cons and that kind of stuff, I can definitely see through them, at least well enough to get around. So I'm going to, you know, show you guys a little bit of that later. So stay tuned. Um, but yeah, you know, it happens. 
I make sure I wash that off because, you know, things like seem like a nice little spot there. <laughs> but it comes right out with water. I've got it, you know, everywhere at this point. <laughs> Nothing you can do about that. But last stage of the paint, um, I will do my hands, but I'm going to do that after I get dressed because my gloves, they, they do show off a little bit of my hands. So really, I'm only going to paint that section. But I'm going to do that very, very last just so it's one less thing I don't have to worry about touching everything while, while I do it. But we still got to do the face. My face tends to hold the color the best, so I really only do one coat on that ever, and it'll still end up be the whitest of all. So I just have to be very careful when I go into my face to make sure that I'm, you know, getting in close to the eyes, getting in close to the nose, but I don't get in too far that I cause any irritation. So you just have to be really careful with it. Woohoo! I am white. I am pretty much as white as I'm going to get at this point. Um, again, everything that is not painted at this point is either getting covered or my hands. We're going to save those for the very, very last. Um, but got to do makeup. So, yay. You think you're done yet? Not even close. It's a fun and joy of being a girl. So let me grab my makeup here. We're going to start with my eyeshadow. I have this beautiful eyeshadow palette. Make sure like, I noticed. So, I'm going to pause before I get that. Didn't do my back, not gonna. Um, it's gonna be hiding under that cloak. However, sometimes my neck will show through the wig. So I'm just gonna do the quickest little covering of it, just in case. Now we'll go back to eyeshadows. Lady Death is one of those fun characters with eyeshadow because she really has so many versatile looks that I can play around with different eyeshadows every time. So a lot of the characters I do, you know, it's the same look every single time. But with her, I can really change it up and see, what am I feeling today? When doing makeup, there's like a million checks. Okay, is it even? I can do this all day long. <laughs> do I like where that's sitting? Why is there that weird blotch over here? Told you, it's all fun. So I'm gonna go back in. Add a little bit more of that dark. Looks a little better. <laughs> all the weird faces you make. Oh, if I look at this way, how do I look? <laughs> My eyes are very wide. Maybe this is just me. Maybe not all other girls are as crazy as I Applying eyeshadow is a lot like applying the body paint, where it's a lot of repetition, a lot of blending, just like we did a lot of the blotting, that makes it look nice and even. So what we're going to do just a little bit of black in here. I don't like to make them too, too dark. But they do need to be... Yeah, you do need to have eyebrows. <laughs> so, gives it a little more definition. Yeah, pretty good. Um, okay, I need some facial features. Mm. So, Lady Death, you know, usually has pretty angular features. I have a fairly round face, so we're going to contour some. So I'm going to give myself a little bit more defined cheekbones. Because I have large cheeks, but not very defined cheekbones. So with any contouring, there's a lot of Going back over and over and over. So see, it just gives me a little bit more of an angular look. I'm gonna do the same to my jawline. For Lady Death, I use contouring on both the cheeks and the nose just to really strike in those features and make them really pop. Starting to look more and more like the lady herself. liking where it's going so far. Okay, I think I'm pretty good with eyeshadow at this point. It's funny because, you know, 
most women, you know, when we contour and we do all that, you know, we have a contour palette. Like I have my own contour palette. But <laughs> for Lady Death, natural shades are not what you're gonna find in a contour palette because I'm entirely white. So I use a lot of gray tones. I'm gonna take this opportunity to, to fast forward a little bit. So you're gonna, gonna have to bear with me as we uh, it more closely you know, matches go through this, but otherwise it's way too lengthy like process. Her contours wouldn't be a beige. They'd be more, you know, the silvers, the grays, those kind of things. So that's what I use, you know, more, more to get those. It looks a little kind of brownish in, in the light, or at least that's how it looks to me, but it is a gray that I use there because again, it, it makes, it makes that, you know, makes it look a little more real. I'm gonna do a little more contouring here. You guys get the full shot here. Just helps a little bit. I can do too much. And I'm letting you in on all us lady secrets. Just a little bit. I've also done characters like Mystique and Corpse Bride. So, you know, with all okay. that experience, uh, I've learned what works for my body. And it's something that you'll learn with experience for your body as well. Eyeliner really helps to make the eyes pop. So for Lady Death especially, I like to really line the full eye. Um, just because it really helps kind of bring out that, that darkness and intensity. Women who else totally makes weird faces while they put on their eyeliner or any mascara? because this is actually a pretty normal one for me right now. Normal one. Uh, <laughs> no, my little thing is breaking. It's pretty good, so the nice wings you know, bring out my eyes. Those are gonna look way different once I get those contacts in. So I have my nice little Eyelashes. I reuse eyelashes like a million times. Literally. <laughs> no. I do use them quite a few times. I'm going to quickly apply my final coat. I treat them very gently smudge. and they last me a good 30 40 wears easily. I'm so a little bit of glue on them. Let me just go. Right on the eye. I give it a second to let the glue here. And ta -da, what a difference it, it does take a lot of time and effort to go over the same spot <laughs> again and again. My makeup, but I'm each time you hit it with the sponge, you make it a little bit more even and, and take away those streaks, which make it look gosh. really nice and clear. Wow, it's beautiful. I love wearing eyelashes. They totally make all the difference in the world to me. One eyelash done. I've applied eyelashes at this point so many times that it comes second nature to me, but the first time it was definitely not so easy. I'm looking good. Starting to look like, you know, like you'd normally see. <laughs> I usually use a lip stain as opposed to a lipstick for most shoots or, you know, um, events, anything like that, just because it tends to last longer and it doesn't smear. So that way I get good clean photos every time. Yeah, so like I said, I've got these nice boots that are going to go here. So see, they pull up past where you can see. So now I don't have to worry about those lines. <laughs> so see, covers all flaws then. Now, this guy here, one of my favorite pieces. I, this was actually one of the first pieces I made for my first Lady Death costume and it's still one of my favorites. I don't know, I guess it'll always hold a soft spot in my heart because of that reason. But it's made completely of Warbler, um, which for those of you that don't know, it's, uh, it's like a thermal plastic, so you can heat it up, reshape it. So I molded all the bones on here and burned my hands doing it. 
Um, but I'm so happy with how this, this guy turned out. So I am thrilled to be able to The warbler is actually really heavy, so I have to have that strap to help support the weight of it. So now mostly dressed. Um, you know, now it's just adding pieces. And that's the fun thing about a lot of my Lady Death costumes is I have so many interchangeable pieces. So even though I don't normally wear these pieces together, I'm gonna put them together for today. So, you know, just changes it up and makes it more fun for me. starting to you know look more and more complete here um, so let me let me get to show you guys my wigs so like I said we're gonna go on a little journey here this is one of favorite my favorite parts of my house BAM look at my wigs and you know you'd think I was a crazy person if I told you that was all my wigs that isn't all my wigs but I've got all these. I have a whole nother box there. Um, I have boxes of wigs on top of all this. But there she is in all her glory. This is my favorite Lady Death wig because she's got some nice volume. There we go. Looking more like you expect. So, that's just one fun little part of my house. So everybody, say a quick hello to Derek Nova of Superheroes Unlimited. I don't know what window. Uh, probably this There's one. There's cameras everywhere, people. There are cameras everywhere. Look away if you're squeamish here, folks. Yeah, if you don't like things going in your eyes, this is the time to look away. Her eyes always try to fight me on this. I do, I do not like things in my eyes. They just naturally want to close. <laughs> so again, something I do for every show, but I don't like it. <laughs> sometimes these go in quick, sometimes they don't go in. And I have to wipe my hands off every time to make sure I don't mess up the makeup too much. There we go. There's one. Yeah, it's one of those unfortunate things that because I can't see very clearly through these, I always have to do my makeup first. So he has to be very careful not to mess it up because I can't see well enough to fix it afterwards. To me, once they go in, everything looks nice and even. <laughs> so I can't tell if there's huge blotches or any of that kind of stuff. Wanna look in close so they can see how different your eyes are. So, if you guys look really close, you can see all the grids on it. That's how I can see. So I'm seeing through all the little grids and basically my mind is just filling in the gaps. So it's like there's a white fog. So while I'm finishing everything. putting in the contacts here, I'd actually like to show you a little bit of what I see. So it's not exactly a perfect representation, but you can kind of see how I just see this fog and it's a little more pixelated here than it is in my actual eye, but that's kind of what I see. Crazy, huh? Here we go. I end up with some makeup on my fingers every time. Then I have to have him do a final check. Do I look? Quickly touching up those little spots, even? trying as best I can when I can't see. So, we're getting close. Gotta add some gloves. Gotta add cake. You're good. Thank you. Mm hmm. Everybody say thank you to Derek. Bye, everybody. I'm getting better about putting contacts in myself. However, I'm just, I'm not very good at it. And because I can't see once it's done, I can't risk being I'm gonna take this opportunity to fast forward a little so, bit. So you're gonna have to I bear with me as we, my uh, contacts with all my other you know, go through but this, no. but otherwise <laughs> it's way too lengthy a process. Because otherwise, like, it's just, 
it's not worth it because it's so hard for me once it's done to try and figure out exactly what, you know, what's wrong. At this point, like I said, I can, I can see decently, like I can clearly see, you know, where I'm going, what I'm doing, but everything has this, you know, haze over it, especially with these lights on me, that I can't see well enough to be able to tell, is that a splotch, is that a smear, you know, does it need fixed? I can't tell any of that stuff. So, starting the gloves. Now, like I said, I'm getting pretty close. I just need my cape. Gotta do everything by feel now. There we go. One of my favorite parts. I've also done characters like Mystique and Corpse Bride. So, you know, with all that experience, I've learned what works for my body. Okay, and it's something that you'll hands. learn with experience we'll for your body. And it's time for the true last of the paint. Just touching up those hands, making sure that they're, they're blended in and not sticking out like everything else. I don't worry about those middle ones. They're going to be covered. But I do want to make sure I get in close enough. Again, if anything shifts, I'm always ready. Last bit of blood. Even though I really can't tell if it's even. I'm going to pretend like I can tell that it's even. So like I said, guys, we're getting pretty close. Really, this has taken, you know, almost two hours now um, to get to. So you guys are lucky you guys got to see the condensed version. Let's go see. Hide those little problems. I'm gonna do a little bit more though because I don't feel like I got close enough. I'm gonna quickly apply my final coat before I hit it with the sponge. Ta-da! Now you'd never be able to tell that, you know, my real color underneath there. It's really cool. Like I said, I've got a lot of different pieces um, in my in my wardrobe for Lady Death. And a lot of them are interchangeable. So, you know, I can decide, do I feel like painting my hands today? You know, do I want a full pair of It does of take a lot of time and effort to go over the same gloves. spot again and again. Um, but you know, each I time you hit it with the sponge, you make it a little like bit having, more even and take know, away those streaks, which make it look like really belt, nice and clear. Do I, you know, like having my armor or more of a traditional look. You know, so it's, it's fun that I can play with mix and matching pieces because it makes it just more interesting that way. You'll never know which version you might see me in. I never know which version I might see me in. <laughs> There's a lot of times I go, hmm, how am I feeling today? But these are the final stages. These are some of my favorite gloves though, because they just look so cool when you throw up the horn. I love it, it just feels awesome. Okay, put that on. And it's always ready. tricky trying to paint two sections together. So, think, so that's why I try to paint in such large here. sections. But, but if you do you have a line where it's a little darker, you can always pull from that dead. section and so drag it towards the lighter thing. section. Thank you all for joining me. It's been a pleasure getting to show you what it takes to become Lady Death. It's one of my great pleasures in life to get to show this to all of you to see, you know, some of the, the work that goes into it and the passion that belongs to me as being part of, of this, you know, sworn universe. It's, it really is a, a pleasure and an honor to be with you all and, you know, to get to show you some of my work and share my passion with all of you and more importantly that you guys share your passion right back with me so thank you guys i, I like that body it. paint has a little bit more of a just natural look